The CPU market. As closely related it is to the GPU market, it seems to function in a totally different way. However, it brings me joy when you have a hardware manufacturer who seems like they're actually reacting appropriately to the feedback and seem like they're listening to their consumers. Let's discuss that in this video. Hey, if you enjoy content like this, drop a like, make sure to subscribe, and smash that bell so you never miss another video. Hey, what is going on guys? Danny here. Welcome back to the channel and I hope you've all been doing well. The CPU market when it comes to AMD is going through a pretty interesting time right now. I think presently the GPU market with all the hardware releases, price hike discussions and more has really dwarfed everything else that's going on. And I suppose that's just generally how things work, right? I mean, the graphics card has the biggest impact on your gaming performance and people make multiple GPU upgrades for their system before they upgrade anything else. When it comes to the Ryzen 7000, series, that release got off to a pretty rocky start. There definitely was some initial hype and most of the reviews I saw were positive, mind you at that time Intel hadn't released Raptor Lake. However, since the beginning, the 7000 series didn't really sell all that well and the biggest contributors to that were expensive motherboards and expensive DDR5 prices. Reviews did show a decent jump gen on gen, but clearly it wasn't enough in the eyes of consumers for them to justify the huge platform costs in order to switch. A lot of people who were already on AM4 said, you know what? I'm just going to buy the 5800X 3D if they were after top tier gaming performance or the 5950X. The 5950X is a 16 core 32 thread Zen 3 CPU and it's still an amazing CPU for productivity along with offering more than sufficient performance for most gamers. I mean really I don't think anyone would be complaining unless they're an esports competitive player and or running a 4090 or 7900 XTX at like 1440p 240Hz so low res high refresh. Currently the 5950X CPU retails for about 500 US on Amazon or if you're lucky enough to live near a micro center you can find it for a bit cheaper. But hey if you're sitting on an old Ryzen 7 2700 X or even something like a Ryzen 5 3600 and you are wanting to make a big leap, then the 5800X 3D and 5950X are amazing drop in upgrades for your AM4 motherboard. And this was the problem. This wasn't just an Intel versus AMD situation. This was an AMD versus AMD problem. That drop in upgrade option that AM4 users had, I think really took away from the sales for Ryzen 7000 and AM5. I did make a video about that a couple months ago where I discussed how AMD's Ryzen 7000 series wasn't selling all too well post launch. I'll have a link to that video in the description. It's definitely worth checking out as I go through all the various reasons which deterred buyers from Zen 4. Though now, it seems like things will be taking a turn for the better. Just recently, Video Cards had posted some information on their website which contained a leak for more Ryzen 7000 series CPUs that AMD will be bringing out fairly soon. This was actually discussed last month as well where they had sourced a Twitter user that posted about how AMD could be releasing three non-X Ryzen 7000 SKUs. Now it seems like they've gotten their hands on more concrete material, which are leaked marketing slides. The first slide they share talks about the three Ryzen 7000 non-X SKUs, it appears as though these three models are exactly the same as what we saw from the Twitter leak about a month ago, even the prices line up as well. The first model is a 12 core part with a boost of up to 5.4 gigahertz, a TDP of 65 watts, and will have an MSRP of 429 US dollars, which isn't too bad. This part looks like it'll be a good competitor against Intel's 13700 and 13700K. The next part we have is the Ryzen 7 7700, an 8 core model that will have a boost of up to 5.3 GHz, and again, a 65 watt TDP. For that matter, all these parts will have a lower TDP as they're being positioned as the economical SKUs in the 7000 series. To achieve this, the base clocks on these CPUs will be reduced quite drastically, though I doubt most people will really care about that because when you actually do need the CPU, it'll intelligently boost up its clock speed, so really no harm done there. The 7700 will have an MSRP of 320. 29, and the 7600 non-X will have an MSRP of 229. I don't think these prices are bad, but I still feel like they could be lower. Had AMD priced them at 299 and 199 respectively, then I think they would have made these CPUs look a lot more enticing. Even the 7900 at 429 in my opinion is a bit high. The reason why I'm saying this is because if you go and take a look at prices of the 7000 X SKUs, like the 7900X or 7600X, you will find that most places have already dropped down their prices significantly. I just recently made a post on my community page that Canada Computers was selling the 7950X for about 699 Canadian, which is about 508 US dollars. 
That right there is a massive drop considering they were selling for about 970 Canadian just a couple months ago. But right now over on Amazon.com you can find a Ryzen 5 7600 for just 249 US or a 7700X for about 346 US. So considering the prices that are listed in this leaked slide, don't you guys think that most buyers might just say screw it, I'll pay the extra 20 bucks or so if that means I can end up with an X part that will give me slightly better performance out of the box? I mean I certainly would but who knows, we've been seeing these upselling tactics being used in the GPU market from AMD, Nvidia, and Intel, so maybe this was AMD's plan all along. Lower prices of the existing XQs, then introduce slightly cheaper non-X models to help stimulate sales of the 7900X or 7600X, and it'll work no doubt. I think there will be a lot of people who will follow that route. The other leaked slide I wanted to talk about included stock coolers. Yep, it seems like AMD is bringing back the stock coolers, which I think is a great move, especially considering these are 65 watt TDP models. I think a lot of people might be content with the performance of these coolers when paired with these CPUs. This will help make the CPUs more enticing, as they wouldn't need to spend money on a cooler, so that's one advantage they have over the X variants, and then they can use that money saved towards DDR5 memory or a motherboard. I was a bit disappointed to see that they didn't make any changes to the stock coolers, but I guess they just didn't want to fix something that wasn't broken, so that's alright with me. The Wraith Prism did a pretty good job as it was. As for a release date, video cards are claiming the embargo lift will be on the 9th of January, which may even be the release date and that AMD will announce the CPU sooner at CES 2023. Now circling back to the pricing of the X variants, like I said, if you take a look at what these parts are selling for now across many retailers, you'll see the prices have dropped drastically. I have never seen a new series of processors get price drops this fast at these margins. For example, the 7900X is listed at 440 US dollars, which is a 20% drop when compared to its MSRP. I feel like AMD should have just released these parts at these prices to begin with. In my initial impressions video, the price at which these CPUs are retailing for now were the price points I had suggested they should have launched at. I'm not sure if it was due to market ignorance, where they didn't really feel threatened by Intel, or if they were just trying to cash in on the hardcore fans that would buy them day one. But clearly things didn't pan out the way they expected them to, and now they've had to drop the price. They have also become concerned by Intel's Raptor Lake non-K parts that will be coming out in the near future. I mean, in the leaked slides, we can clearly see AMD have listed those parts that they expect these non-X7000 CPUs to compete with. They're clearly feeling threatened by Intel's 13th gen, and that was another contributor for them to release these non-X parts already. I mean, we didn't even get the non-X Ryzen 5000 parts until earlier this year, and by that point, the 5000 series had already been out for like a year and a half. The reason for that was because AMD simply didn't need to release those cheaper non-X parts for the 5000 series because they were just dominating the market and then it wasn't until Intel retaliated with Alder Lake where they felt like, okay, now we got to start making some moves here to retain our market dominant position. Giving credit where credit is due, at least this shows they are listening. As it stands right now, I really don't have a problem with the pricing of the 7000 parts anymore. Where AMD will still have some difficulty is with convincing people to make the platform switch. DDR5 pricing is something that's out of their control, but I have noticed that pricing for DDR5 RAM compared to where it was like even two months ago has come down considerably. I was taking a look at pricing for kits recently and you can find 32GB DDR5 6000 kits going for around $150 to $170, which don't get me wrong is still on the higher side, but compared to where it was just two months ago when the Ryzen 7000 series was launching, it's, it's a really good improvement. However, when it comes to motherboards, this is where I feel like the situation really hasn't improved all that much. Ideally, for most consumers, B650 boards are what they should be going after, as these are positioned as the economical solutions for consumers in the space. The issue is that even to get a decent B650 board, you're going to have to pay around $200 plus, which is pretty steep, especially compared to last gen where you could get a really solid B550 board in the low 100s. So this is an area where I feel like AMD will have to work with its partners to bring costs down, whether that's done through rebates or combo deals, I'm not sure. The one thing I will point out though is that if you do end up spending more money on a board than you would have liked, at least you can rest easy a bit knowing that it'll have future support for future Ryzen generations for AM5. AMD have said that AM5 will have support for the socket until 2025 at least, so you probably won't have to spend money again on a new motherboard, 
to upgrade your CPU. Though I have my fingers crossed for that one, and I'm not completely sold on that feature myself just yet because AMD have tried to pull a fast one on us before, so it's up to you to consumer to keep them in check for that. Nonetheless, I feel like things are trending in the right direction for AMD's CPU division, depending on how things go for the release of the non-X variants, and also how Zen 4 3D may make an appearance at CES from what I'm told, then AMD is setting themselves up to be in a great position to dominate and take over the market once again. If you guys found this video to be informative and entertaining, then leave a like. Let me know your thoughts and comments down below. Be sure to check out the video description for cool links and ways to support the channel, such as using my Amazon affiliate link. And if you're interested in seeing more content like this, then consider subscribing, I'd greatly appreciate it. Thank you guys so much for watching, take care and I'll see you in the next one.